check it out guys we got a new cpu cooler we're going to be doing an unboxing for this is the m120 d plus two it's got some really cool specs on it i'm really excited to get this thing out the box so let's get into it before we get into this i just want to show you a couple things this is the product specifications uh, this is all the fan stuff here and this is what it's compatible with down here. And it says that the AM4, which is what my CPU is, is a Ryzen 5 3600. So it says it should fit this. Whoa. Check it out, guys. Two fans. This thing's pretty, this thing has some weight on it, too. Now, the box from Amazon didn't come a little scuffed up here, but let's go ahead and open this up. This thing did come with thermal paste and a little stick. Next part is hardware. These are the brackets to mount to the motherboard. This looks like another bracket piece. And something really cool. It came with a screwdriver. Look at this. Um, pretty nice. Then we have some directions here for the M120D Plus 2 CPU cooler. So these are all the parts that came with this. So let's go ahead and get this installed. The reason why we're changing this out is because this stock cooler is not keeping the CPU cool enough. It's, it's hitting temps of about 88 Celsius, which is just way too high. So... And I've replaced this once before and, you know, redid the thermal paste and it didn't make any change to the temperatures. So that's the reason why we're doing an upgrade. All right. So first thing is first, you got to remove all these screws right here, right here, right here and there. This is the old one. And with these Ryzen's, after you've loosened it, you want to try and twist it left and right and then pull up as you turn. Because there's going to be some thermal paste on there. See, this one was still fresh and wet as you can see it. Now we're going to go on ahead and clean up this and get it clean. So as you can see here, this is a lot cleaner than, than what it was. What I, Basically what I did is I took some cotton balls, jumbo cotton balls, and, and then I went on ahead and got some rubbing alcohol. The higher the percentage, the better. And all I did was rub this off. So as you can see, it's a lot cleaner. You can actually read the information that's on here. Now that our CPU is clean, it looks a lot better. You got to make sure all that thermal paste is removed before you do this. But we got the CPU cooler off of it. Uh, this specific model here is for the AM4. So these, these are the directions right here. So that's the ones I'm going to be showing you. Here's our plate right here. It's even labeled for AMD and Intel. And what you're gonna wanna do is, is you need to get one of these, this, a spacer, and then one of these. So let me show you how to do this. You can see here AMD, put that in here. Then turn this so that matches up, you see that? These little things have a little tab on it, as you can see right here. See that little lip? Boom, it goes right on, see that? And there we go. So now we have this bracket ready to be installed. Let's put it on the back. All right, now we're on the back side of the computer here. Line these up with these holes. As you can see here, it fits perfectly. All four holes are in there perfectly. So now let's go on ahead and bolt it down. All right, so the step I'm on is this right here. As you can see, plastic pieces down on the bottom. I've actually already screwed one in just so I can hold this because I'm kind of one-handed. So the next one's gonna go here. All right, so I did go on ahead and screw all four of these in. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Everything was good. So now we are going to move on to the next step, which is getting this plate here and the spacers installed, and then we should be able to get the intercooler. So I will have to go on ahead and lay this computer flat. Let's take this out of there. As you can see here, it's labeled again, Intel, 
and AMD. And this one actually says AM4. Here, this thing just slides right on. Now we take this part here and start screwing it down. Now I am screwing these on here. There should be four total. All right, so all these are on there. Make sure these are good and tight. Everything is screwed down. Next thing is getting this beast of an intercooler. And I have to show you guys this. This is the size of my hand. This is huge. It's a big intercooler and it has a little bit of weight on it. So, and also keep in mind this down here, it says, please peel off this label warning. So we're going to peel that off. It does look like there are six intercoolers on here. So before you go pushing this down on here, you got to have your thermal grease or thermal paste ready to go. The good news is, is that this one actually comes with it here. So I went out and bought some, but I'm not going to use it because this one came with us. So this paste that they gave me is kind of garbage, guys. I'm not going to lie. So that one came with thermal grease, and it was thicker than what I'm used to seeing. So I have actual thermal paste. You can put down in the comment section below if you think yeah, I should have used grease instead of thermal paste. They said there's not supposed to be a difference online, but so I don't know what the deal is because that stuff it just feel it felt expired. You see how that is, Tiff? You can move this around like this, like this is thick and sticky. Mm -hmm. The other stuff was just putty, like literally. Like it was dried up. Yeah, it was like it was dried up. So now we're gonna go on ahead and scoop this all over. Mm -hmm. And you want to cover up this whole entire thing. It's okay to leave a huge bubble of it in the middle or a big dab of it in the middle because when you push the intercooler down this stuff is all going to soak out the sides and like i said it's okay if it soaks out the sides um it, it'll be fine so there we go you can no longer see the ryzen symbol on there so now the next step is actually getting this intercooler installed all right so now that we have this intercooler we have to screw this down what you have to do is this side pops off. Oops, kind of came off a little aggressive there. <laughs> but the reason why they gave you such a long screwdriver is because this has to go inside it. So that's why they gave you a cool screwdriver. You want to have it going this way with this here. And try and line this up. So you want to stick this down in here. All right, so I got it screwed in there. You don't want to screw one side in all the way though. Don't over torque it because you have to screw down the other side. All right, guys, we got them both in. They are tightened down. You don't want to strip it. So, you know, just give it a little bit of torque. And there you go. This thing is installed and it's not moving. Now you want to put the cover back on this. Don't forget to do that. Now, the very next thing that you want is take the wires and do your best to do some really good wire management. With this being a mining rig, you know, I kind of already have wires going everywhere. But So, the very next thing that you want to do is, is this is for your CPU fan. So, on your motherboard, you want to plug that into the CPU fan slot. Every motherboard is different, so, but mine is up here, up top and it should plug right into the board. The next thing is a SATA hookup, which is this here. I have to run this to the back side. Now, there are a couple different ways to wire this thing up. The method that I'm going with is this one down here. So we're gonna go this route per the directions, just plug in the SATA, the USB, and the fan, which I have all three of those. So this one is the USB. Make sure it lines up with what's on your motherboard so that you're not going to break these pins because these pins are very delicate that plugged right in all right so we are on the back side of the computer forgive me for some of the dust um 
what we're gonna have to do is is find us a set of connector on this power supply I you want to make sure that you have multiple SATA hookups you don't want to overpower these the reason being is because I have three different cords of SATA hookups you probably want to put this one on its own individual SATA hookup if you overpower these they will burn up and they are a fire hazard if you hook too many of them up that's why I have multiple different wires these are not hooked up to the same one so so now let's plug it in and take a look and see if it works and there you go it has life it's got a nice little rainbow theme it's got the temperature gauge up here sitting at 24 celsius which is a lot cooler than what the stock one was sitting at now i just want to show you guys i connected this up into my rgb controller and i have all these different settings so now i've plugged them in check it out guys this thing changes all different colors you can do all sorts of different things and put it on mode and it will just play different things you can do rainbow You can change all different colors, but for the most part, I'm just keeping it on green. And uh, overall, I love it. Gives you the temperature down here. Uh, this is internal to the case, so and that's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I know it says 24 Celsius, but uh, overall, it's running a lot better. So no complaints here. If you like this, like, comment, subscribe. It's your boy Endless. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace. And that's how you install the all-seeing eye. <laughs>